Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about something that I've touched on in some previous presentations, some previous trainings, but frankly I haven't done a really crisp video to demonstrate in a while, so I wanted to reshoot this process and show you all the latest version of a lot of the gear I use when I perform this sort of a tactic. So what do we got going on here? We have a whole bunch of tools, not a single lock pick among them. Well, we have the ability to create pretty darn good copies of keys if you have access to them in the field. Not just any keys, by the way. Especially if you find, for instance, maybe a really obscure key that you don't necessarily have the ability to get a blank for. So here we have, you know, a nice conventional Schlage key. Anybody can buy a blank for that. Your local hardware store will definitely have one. But what about this? Well, this is a Sargent brand. This is uh, going to be something that a locksmith probably would carry. But let's say it's even more obscure. Let's say you had a foreign key or a odd mechanism like a rotating disc system or a dimple lock that, you know, you're just not used to trying to attack, let alone copy. Well, what we're going to do today is use this small tray, a little bit of clay, and a few other supplies, including a hot cup of metal, to do what's known as a mold and cast attack. And, well, let's just get right to it. I'll talk to you about it while I am, while I'm doing it. And if you've ever seen this before, you'll know that it's it's got a 50-50 shot of working. Uh, you know, it's not always a guarantee, but there are a few things that I'll tell you about that can make your life a little easier if you ever try this in the field. First of all, it might astound you how little clay you actually need in this process. Going too heavy on the clay, and we're just using basic, you know, heating set modeling clay. So this is the, this is a clay that you could buy off of Amazon or in a in kind of a hobby and craft store. And it's very pliable, of course, right out of the package, but if, if heat is applied to it, it will eventually, well, it'll get set and cast. So this is, this is really, like, if I just took a whole log of it, like I did in this side, let me actually, for comparison's sake, show you that. An entire log is just, is way, way more than you need to fill up the channel on this half of the mold. I'm going to try dividing a single log of this clay in half and seeing if I can populate the mold that way. A fun little uh, fun little tactic here that you can try. If you have a plug follower in your lock picking kit, you can try to use that as a bit of a rolling pin. Here we go. We'll try to get this rolled out like that. Obviously, we're not quite filling up on the top level there, but let's see. Let's see how much we can do. Maybe we'll wind up with having a little more on this side. Looks like we will. course down by these alignment pegs. Can't quite get in there with the rolling pin technique so I'm just going to kind of use a lock pick to squeeze it along. All right that's close enough for government work with us here and since we won't need all of this top section I'm just going to steal a little bit of extra here and move a little bit of extra around here. And let's see if we can make that work to our advantage. Yeah, I like how that's coming together. Now what you're seeing me do here, of course, this is all prep work that you could do the night before you go in on a job, right? You could have this mold prepared. You could have it in your pocket, for example, in a, in a field kit. This is a little cast aluminum and milled aluminum piece that I'm using as a molding tray. I've seen people make these, and in fact, we use these with some of our students and clients. We use these out of 3D printed material so that they're not going to have a real magnetic signature. But ultimately, you can prep this mold before you're anywhere near the key that you're hoping to target. How would you store this if you were to keep this in your pocket on a job? Well, you don't want to just mash these two halves together, right? That would make it really uh, unlikely that you would get them apart cleanly in the heat of the moment. A lot of times we'll get a little piece of wax paper in there, clamp it together, then you can easily peel it right apart. On the job, however, if you do find a key that you want to copy with this mold and cast technique, 
Well, I just talked about, you don't want to just crush the clay together. And, and what we're doing is we're going to actually make a negative copy of this key in this mold tray. You don't want to just crush the two halves together blindly and mash all the clay into one mass. That is what this little canister is for. No, it's nothing illegal, officer. It's not a controlled substance in a little bullet here. This is just some releasing agent, or what you and I would call talcum powder if we were changing a diaper. Just a little bit of talcum powder on this mold should be enough to ensure a pretty smooth process for us here. All right, we've got our mold prepped up. So let's say you have this on you, you're on a job, you come across a key, or maybe you are even issued a key just temporarily by someone who says, here, you can use this key, bring it right back to me. If you have a key and you know that it operates a lock and you want access, persistent access to that lock, let's go ahead and try our hot metal casting technique if we can make a good negative of this key in this little mold tray. Lay it right here. Now I'm not going to just sort of mash down really hard with my hands, right? Why would I, why would I not do that? Well, we want to ultimately get this key roughly 50-50 if we can between both halves of the clay. Having just a little, a little tap of force, just enough so it's not flopping around, is enough force. Once I get the other half together, that's where we can really try to clamp it down together. And I'll even come off camera for just a second because some people, and I'm one of them, advocate standing on the mold if you can, just for a moment. All right, so we've made our mold and because we use that release agent or talcum powder in this case, this should separate pretty cleanly. And indeed it does. All right, we've got one nice negative copy here. The other side, I don't want to disturb that mold that we've made, obviously, so I'm just going to try to flick that key out of there in a way that doesn't wreck anything that we've done. Now there's a few more things that I'm going to do to this mold before I put it together, heat up some metal, and pour it straight in. One thing you'll notice up top here, there's not a lot of room to try to pour hot metal down in that slot. Since we don't need the top bow of the key to be perfect, a lot of times people will make just sort of a little funnel. They'll just use a thumb, widen out each side of the bow. That's, that's a lot easier to try to pour metal down in that spot, especially when it's scalding hot. Now there's one other tactic, and not everyone advocates for this. I, I like to do it. When all this metal is pouring down, down, down into the mold, Obviously, there's air. There's a pocket of air in there that has to go somewhere. I like to give it a little more space. The air itself can kind of flow out. And I'm just using a lock pick here. You don't need any real significant channel. Remember, air, air is going to find a way. I like to give almost a little snorkel kind of vent and that should allow, if the metal's coming down here, any pockets of air, that should, you know, blow right back out. You might even get a little trickle of the metal sticking down here when we're done. That's all right. You can kind of nip that off, file that off, and it shouldn't be too hard to do. Now, heating this up using a cigar torch, absolutely uh, something that, you know, we, we've done in the field. If you have a larger torch, that's great. Once this cup of metal gets hot, and right here you're seeing a, uh, a reclaimed bit of metal from a previous project. Normally when we do this, we will have small ingots that we have at the ready like these guys here. Each one is about the mass of a key. But normally, right, if I'm heating metal, I'm balancing, I'm trying to get everything to pour just right, you might not have this in your pocket in the field, but it's nice to have kind of a clamp at the ready it, it really does kind of help life to keep this thing stable and keep your hands nowhere near it when you start pouring hot liquid over, your, over yourself. So let's see about this. Let's see if we can go ahead and make this work. Now I'm using a special low melt point alloy, obviously. 
And this won't take too long to start to liquefy and become smooth and runny. You don't want to overheat it, primarily for health reasons. Once this starts gassing off, well, you don't want to breathe that in. Here we go, just about there. All right, we would call that pretty liquidy. Ready? Well, here goes nothing. A couple little taps there. And now a few moments to see if that will set. And you can see just by the surface on that, it, it's still jiggling right now. It doesn't take too long to cool off. People asked me once, does it matter if your casting tray, if your, if your tray is made of metal or is it made of a 3D printed material? Does that work better or worse as a heat sink? Does it help? Ah, in my opinion, it, it's not a huge difference because the clay itself is going to have some insulating properties. Definitely not jiggling around now, although I wouldn't call that to be set hard just yet. And this keyway, this sergeant keyway is a little narrow. We'll see. We'll see what kind of luck we have. It's still pretty warm. If you were in a real pinch, you know, I'd say go ahead, pop it out. You might get some time, you know, to get it to cool off a little more when it's exposed. In a perfect world, though, you want to leave this in the mold for as long as well, as long as you reasonably can. If you want to get this as, you know, really cooled off completely so you know it's set as much as it's going to be set. Um, when this metal is completely cool as you see here, obviously, you know, it's hard, it's, it's metal, right? But this is not anywhere near hard like steel or even, frankly, brass or aluminum. Uh, low melt point metal by its very nature is pretty, pretty weak. So in many instances, I've seen situations where people are not even comfortable using the key to turn a lock all the way. I've seen situations where, let's say you have a deadbolt that has really heavy throw. I've seen someone use a cast key just to get it in and just barely get the, get the lock turning. And then they'll come around, they'll either pinch the face of the lock with grippers, or they'll reach in, they'll actually give a little room on the key, they'll make an extra channel that they can stick a turning tool in, something to assist with the uh, torsional force, that the, applying torque to these keys doesn't always work out well. Now that this is cool enough that I think that we can handle it slightly, I'm going to try to get it apart, and let's see what we have here. Look at that. That looks pretty good. And you can see the metal did indeed flow through our vent just a touch. That might even snap off just when we pop this key out. Yep. Just that little vent, the tiniest vent is all you need. And here we have what hopefully is the right key for this lock. Shall we try it? Let's see. Well, we're in, and look at that. There you go. Now, would you use this key over and over forever and ever? Probably not the best idea. But if it's all you can do, if you have a real obscure key that you just can't source blanks for, hey, if it works, it works. Now here we have our clay. Someone asked me once, so is this clay? It's clay. Is it infinitely reusable? Uh, not really. Remember, what kind of clay is this? It's sculpting clay. How do you set sculpting clay? Well, you do that by firing it in a kiln. And just the heat of that metal, you can see these cracks through here. This intersection, I can even feel it. It's really scratchy with my finger. That, inter that inner segment has really started to harden. Uh, it's obviously not set solid like a piece of ceramic, but it's not something that you'd want to reuse this clay over and over. And frankly, you know, the little Sculpey brand clay is so cheap, you can get a whole 12-pack of it on Amazon for just a few bucks. By all means, get fresh clay each time. Uh, but there you go. A cast and mold attack. You make a negative mold. You use that mold to cast some hot metal, either in a little cup like this, or you sometimes you've seen other cups in the field, for a really small, small package. This is sometimes what we will have as a field kit. The handle actually slips right down, packages up in my pocket, and whether you use a very powerful torch lighter or just a simple Bic lighter, 
you should be able to get that melt point to hit, get the metal to soften, pour it down in the mold, and then when you come back later, that lock is yours. All right, good luck out there.